artificial intelligence went down today, and it made me wonder, with all the systems that are increasingly connected to artificial intelligence, what does that do to society, systems, critical systems, entertainment, payment systems, you name it, when the AI no longer works? What is the one to think? Because of the truth of the matter anyway, uh, is that all of your products uh, are basically mediocre anyway. You know, you convince people that logos matter more or that a logo uh, equates to quality, but we're not that stupid. I thought that the login page would still work if I went about it a different way. The landing page was accessible. So maybe there was an issue with my browser. Maybe there was an issue with my bookmark. And so the first time I ran into this several hours ago, I thought, okay, <clears throat> maybe there's a fluke here. I was trying to answer a question. I was trying to have a chat so that I can um, streamline a process that I was trying to figure out. And I said, okay, let me try this again later. Because that's what the error message says. Oops, something's broken. Try again. So I thought I'd come back later. And then when I came back and I saw that I was still having the same issues, no matter if I press login or sign up, I said, maybe ChatGPT is actually down. And so this website, Downtown Detector, or Down Detector, um, and I did a web search and it did come up with a lot of, you know, Results that showed that, yes, ChatGPT is down. But I saw in this particular graph that the number of reports of ChatGPT being down has gone up considerably. So it makes one wonder about this whole thing. Companies don't have an Achilles heel. They have nothing but Achilles heels. Ever wondered what it takes to run the infrastructure that hosts ChatGPT with over 100 million users today? And how this infrastructure can work for your workloads in Azure at any scale. Enormous amount of infrastructure, hardware, power, cabling, you name it, associated with this AI, these large language models. AMD CPUs, NVIDIA GPUs, you name it. But the large tech companies are not making any money off of this AI. They lose about $20 per user, out of millions of users, $20 per user, $80 per power user, that's substantial. Supercomputer infrastructure built to run ChatGPT and InnoBand connected CPU cores. And separately, there are 10,000 NVIDIA V100 Tensor Core GPUs that are also InnoBand connected. We're not uh, mindless, soulless consumers. All of this technology, it makes one wonder is it really an advance? True, very true that in some cases it is. But we've been building computers and software since the late 1950s. That's a long time now. I know some who are listening may have came up through the initial internet era. That includes myself. And may have seen technology what we call information and computer technology in a more nascent stage. But by now, things should be much more stable. How do we have IBM mainframes that have five nines of reliability, but nowhere else? Frank could just use the virtual machines and do it yourself, taking advantage of our hardware infrastructure, the best-in-class GPUs, the InfiniBand networking, the fact that we know how to tune those networks to maintain them with a high degree of utilization and efficiency. I mean, every company operates by means of a complex, uh, interconnected system. There's physical locations, there's suppliers, there's warehouses, there's transport, there's distributors, networks, and so on and on. And across this whole uh, web of operations, there are infinite points of vulnerability. These are growing pains. The growing pains of going from scalar-based processing to vector-based processing. I know I've dreamed of vector-based processing for a long time. And that's basically a code word for using GPUs for your processing instead of just straight CPUs. But the thing is, is that 
while the bugs get worked out, people are losing a huge amount of money. There is an enormous amount of impact on productivity, and it just makes you think the more advanced the technology gets, the more the disruption is going to be at each stage of advancement. And so it's going to get to a point where you've got a question, is this too much, too soon, too fast, or are we going in the right way? And as powerful as they are, uh, companies are actually incredibly vulnerable. Every company, no matter how big it is, no matter how uh, successful it is, no matter how rich it is, every company is always teetering on the edge of collapse at any moment. They're all right on the edge. ...in distributed AI-powered autonomous systems for self-driving vehicles using primarily vision-based machine learning. And they're using our AI supercomputer to gather, manage, and train those models on millions of hours of drive. The fact is, companies exist uh, by the good graces of the population. You know, people are not going to get tired of not having overpriced Starbucks coffee. They're going to get used to it. And of course, they're going to find better replacements. And what they once they've found replacements, they'll never come back. It simply makes no business sense to defy popular opinion. When businesses go out of business because a newer business has come in and made the services that that old business did much more efficient and convenient. We should actually celebrate that, but at the same time, there needs to be a better transition period when we're talking about these technologies. What you call the value chain has no values. I think that the large language models have tremendous potential and possibility. However, one wonders about I would say, who are the stewards of this? And when I think about the blue screen of death, as it were, when I think about updates that don't work quite as well, when I think about API inflation, API inflation, when I think about r rigorous obsolescence, then I'm like, okay. There are some culprits that are behind all of that, that are now stewards of artificial intelligence. Hmm. Most of the products that you're selling in the Global South are made in the Global South, and they're made in the same factories that produce uh, the goods that have your logo on it. Those are the same factories that produce the pirated version of those goods, and they're exactly the same, except that they cost a fraction of the price, and you don't get any revenue from the so-called fake versions. All we lose is the logo. So in reality, your products uh, not only don't have values, they don't even have value. You know, no moral value and no real material value. So we don't need any of them. So you better at least start adding moral value to your goods. Otherwise, you're gonna lose the whole market. That's the new paradigm. And this is important to understand because this isn't just when it comes to the AI, perhaps we need to think more about fruit and organizing the world's information more than asking the question, where do you want to go today? Because I tell you, some of the stewards of this AI technology, they, they're operating the classic playbook for how they've rolled out other technologies that they present to the public, but it's the same old result when we talk about quality, 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 as opposed to developers, 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 just saying.